In this lecture, we look at molar specific heats. You may recall when we first spoke about specific heats that they are not constants. They do depend on volume and pressure. We're going to look at a, two interesting cases where we look at the molar specific heat at constant volume and at constant pressure. First, look at, let's look at constant volume. That is, if we look at the pressure versus volume plot of a, of a transition from an initial to final state, we are, we are going along the vertical line from the initial to the final state, changing the pressure, but, but the volume is staying constant. The heat then is given by the number of moles times this molar specific heat at constant volume, C sub V, times the change in temperature. For an ideal gas, it's easy to show that the CV is equal to 3 halves R. The molar specific heat at constant pressure is similar. Here now we're going to go on the horizontal line from an initial to a final state where the pressure is staying constant and we're changing the volume. Again, we have Q is equal to the number of moles times C sub P times the change in the, pre in the temperature. For an ideal gas, Cp is equal to Cv plus R, or Cp is equal to 5 halves R for an ideal gas. Uh, the extra arc comes from the fact that when you change the at constant pressure, more heat is required to change the temperature, since work is being done. The work being done leads to this extra R. At constant volume, there is no work done, obviously. If we go beyond ideal and monatomic molecules, ideal gas atoms only have translational energy. They're particles. They have no rotation or anything else. Monatomic molecules are very similar to particles, so as for a, a, a good, they are a good, by a good approximation that you can, they can be treated as ideal gas atoms and have the values of Cb and Cp given above. Diatomic or polyatomic atoms can also rotate. The more degree, so there are more degrees of freedom th that can hold energy. And it turns out that you get a half of a R per degree of freedom. This is known as the equipartition theorem. For a diatomic molecule, there are five degrees of freedom. Three translational plus two rotational. Uh, there is one rotation that is along the axis connecting the two uh, atoms, which really doesn't hold much energy because it's spinning, it doesn't have much extent. However, for a polyatomic uh, atom where there is a three-dimensional structure, there we now have the six degrees of freedom, and each degree of freedom has half R, and this prediction gives three R. In truth, it works best, this, this uh, approximation works best for monatomic and diatomic molecules and not so well for polyatomic molecules. Cp for each of these is, is given by, by adding an additional R to, to the Cb values. Let's look at an example of baking. You preheat an oven from room temperature to, from 293K to 450K to bake some cookies. How much does the internal energy of the air in the oven change? The volume of the oven is 0 0.4 meters cubed. Let's say the assumptions are that the air is an ideal diatomic gas. That says Cb diatomic is equal to 5 halves R. The volume is constant and the pressure is constant because air is not trapped in the oven. It can leak in or out. The number of moles is not constant because the air can leak in or out. So delta E internal is equal to W plus Q. And for constant V, W is equal to zero. So delta E int is equal to Q times C sub V times delta NT. Notice the change is for both N and T. So the temperature and the number of moles change in this process. We can use the ideal gas law where there's using PV equals NRT. And that will then give us the, and we can do a change on both sides. So the change in PV is equal to the change in NRT, pulling out the R, which is a constant. 
then we have that delta nt is equal to delta pv divided by r. We're going to plug this back into our the equation above. This that delta ent is delta internal is equal to cv delta of the number of moles times the temperature. And we write this in terms of the change in terms of pressure and volume. So cv divided by r times the change in p and v. But this is equal to zero because neither p or V change. They're both constants. So the kinetic energy of each molecule in the oven increases, but the, ch but the internal energy of the air molecules do not change at all. And that's it.